Hey, my name is Michael Memory. I'm a web developer and a coding bootcamp instructor. And I'm here to talk to you about connecting the dots between JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. If you're just starting out to learn web development, it can be a little bit confusing. There's a lot of code editors out there. There's lots of resources to learn from. And you might be coming from some websites like Codecademy or Free Code Camp, where you've been taking some lessons on there and using their in-browser editors. Well, I'm gonna to talk to you today about how to connect the dots between that environment and actually making a website. Okay, the first thing we need to understand about how the internet works is that it's just a matter of passing around files. So different computers are passing around different files to each other and the web browsers are the tool that we use to decipher that information from those files and display it in a certain way. So when I go to google.com, my browser sends off a request to Google's servers. Google's servers then send me back a response with an index.html file. And the index.html file has a bunch of linked files or a bunch of sources where it goes to download other files like images, JavaScript files, or CSS files. In order to write the code for all of these files that are being passed around, we need to have a code editor. Um, there are a couple popular ones. Um, you might have heard of Atom. If we go there, Atom is a popular code editor. There's also one made by Microsoft called Visual Studio Code. If we go to their website for that, you can go download that one. I'm going to be doing this tutorial in Atom just to show you what it's like. Um, there are other editors out there that are paid, like WebStorm, and you can get pretty crazy with these things, but just pick the one you like the best and go with it. They all pretty much do the same thing. They highlight your code in different ways, and they have add in, in some nice features here and there. Um, but go ahead and install Atom if you want to follow along with me, and I will bring that to the window here. Here's Adam. It's uh, on a fresh open. Um, what it's asking me here is, do you want to open up a new project or install a package, choose a theme so I can change the colors of my editor? This program is just a way for me to write code and it colors it nicely. It, but you can really write code in anything. You could write code in Notepad and save it out as a, as a .html file and it would be the same thing. So over here on the left, I have this untitled file that I can start typing into and you see I can start writing out some HTML code that you're probably already familiar with and it doesn't really color it anything so let's actually save this somewhere we'll put it maybe onto the desktop um, and I'll call this index.html I'll save that you can see the file popped up over here and look it changed the color of the code that I just wrote. See how this is red? It used to just be white. That's what code editors do. They make code a lot nicer to write, but you can write code in pretty much any any text editor. One thing to note about HTML files is that your computer probably already defaults to opening up the browser when you open that file. So if I double click on this file off in my desktop, it's going to open that file into my browser. So the browser just linked to an HTML file as if it went across the internet and asked google.com for its index.html. My browser just opened up an HTML file from, from my computer locally. And you can see the file path, file, users, lessons, etc. all the way to this index.html file that's on my desktop. Now there's nothing in here. I could change that. I could come in here and start typing out some things like hello world save it. Um, I can either reopen the file because it's now got different code in it or I can just come over here and refresh and there's my hello world. Um, if we write something maybe in a header tag and save that. I'll come over here, refresh. Now it's in an h1 tag and you're probably already familiar with how this is, uh, how HTML is written. If you're not, I would highly recommend going using a tool like Codecademy or Free Code Camp to learn the syntax um, and how to write HTML. So we've got our HTML file here and it's saved onto the desktop. We don't really want to put all of our code files out onto our desktop. 
we'd actually prefer to put it into separate folders. So let's actually make a new folder on the desktop. You can save this wherever you want that makes sense on your computer. I'm just going to put it on my desktop for demonstration. And I'll say my first project. And that's just an empty folder. I could put this index.html file in there, but I, I'll just delete this for now. We don't need it. Um, you can see my code editor immediately responded to that, to that deletion. Here I'm going to say open up a new project and click on this button and it will ask me to point out a code project. So I'll click on this folder and I'll open that and it opens up a new code editor window. Let's just close this other one so we don't have that cluttering the space. Um, and I'll close the browser for now. Now I have right here on the left a file tree. I could right click and say new file and we'll put our index.html in there um, and now I have index.html inside of my for my first project folder and if we open this over here in the finder you can see that we have that there as well it just whatever I create in this file tree over here it will create on my computer so I got these to the browser and the code editor side by side so we can see them more easily and I've just opened up my index.html file right here in the browser. Um, let's start writing out some HTML. The first thing we need to do is tell the browser when it reads through this document that it is an HTML document. Computers are pretty stupid we have to tell them every little detail of what to do. So then we'll put our HTML tag in here opening and closing and inside of here we'll put what's called a head tag. This will contain information about the web page. And then down here we'll put the body. The body will contain all of our content. In the head tag I can put a title And in here I'll say my first project. Save that and refresh and you'll see that it, it gained this title up here on the tab. That's what the title tag is. We, just, we can change that to whatever we want and it will show up in the tab when somebody accesses your website. In the body tag we'll put maybe an H1 for the heading of our website and that will be my first project um, and then we can put as much content in here as we want after that. So the next thing we might want to do to our website or our web page is add in some styling. Now the HTML file is going to be the first file that the browser sees. After that um, you can put anything you want in here. Maybe we could put a style tag right in here open and open and close those things and in here we can write our CSS so I could say h1 I want you to have a color of red and I'll save that go over to the browser and refresh and there's my h1 with the red color I just wrote that CSS right in between these style tags and I could have thousands of lines of CSS in between these style tags but that would get pretty messy for our HTML file um, it's kind of difficult for developers to code when there's such long files. Um, instead of putting all of our CSS right in the style tag, we're going to use, we're actually going to remove the style tag altogether, and we're going to use what's called the link element. And that is self-closing, so we put the slash caret symbol at the end. And in here I'm going to say rel is a style sheet that just tells the browser that we're loading up a style sheet here and then an href of dot slash main style dot css you can name this whatever you want this is just a file path to another file that i want to download for my website um, the dot slash or the dot in front of the slash means start looking in the file structure from where you are so where you are index.html and then go and grab the main style.css. I could also put this inside of a CSS folder and then into and then grab the main style.css. Let's actually do that. 
So I'm going to come over to my file tree because this file is not created yet. I'll right click and I'll say new folder. And we called this CSS in our path. So I'll call it CSS here. So we have a new folder in here. And I'll right click on here and say new file. And we'll call this main style.css. And now we have a CSS file in our project. Uh, and we're linking to it in our index.html file. Let's save that index.html file and then go over to our main style.css and I'll write out h1 and color is blue, we'll say. Save that file and then come over here and refresh and there's my h1, but it's blue now. And that's because I've referenced that file from my index.html file. And in this file, I could put thousands of lines of code, but I mean, that wouldn't be very nice to go through as a developer. So we can split this, these styles up into many, many different files. We just have to link to them here in our index.html file. Okay, so we got some styles in here. There's not too much, it's pretty simple. Um, the next thing we might want to put into our website is some JavaScript. Maybe we want to manipulate the page with some logic. Um, we're going to do that with a script tag. And just like a style tag, I can put all of my JavaScript in here. We actually need to close this, so make sure you have the opening and closing. I can put all of my JavaScript in here, so I could set up a var x equals three, and so on. I can have thousands of lines of JavaScript between these script tags. But just like we did with CSS, we're going to want to split that up into a different file. The nice thing about script tags is you can do it just with a script tag. With a CSS file, you need to link to it with a link element, but the script element actually allows us to put an attribute called src here, and we'll give it a file path. So we'll say dot slash, start from where you are, then go into the JS folder, and then we'll grab the main.js file. And that's not created yet, so let's go make the JS folder and create the main.js file. And in here, I'm just gonna save the index.html file. In here, we can write all of our JavaScript code that you might or might not be familiar with. This isn't so much of a JavaScript tutorial as it is just a big picture tutorial. Um, but I can create a variable, set it equal to three. Then I will do a console.log x. And oh, what does this console log do? Well, in the browser, we have access to what's called a console. I'm gonna save this main.js file and come over to the browser window and refresh. Um, and nothing happened, nothing, where's, where's the console here? Well, if you right click and say inspect, it's going to open up a developer panel here. Now there's an elements tab, there's a console tab, there's a sources tab, network. This is all just for developers to look at what's going on with the website. Um, what we want right now is the console, and if I click on that, you'll see that we show the number three right here. And it actually tells you which file it came from, main.js line three, and that console log is right here, main.js line three. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Um, we console logged x, and before that we set x equal to three, so JavaScript read through that and naturally console logged three. It didn't console log the variable called x. It console logged what x held inside of it, x's value. We could also make a function in here where we could maybe call this add two numbers. And then in here we'll take in two numbers, num1 and num2. Um, and then we will say console.log num1 plus num2. Now let's execute the function, add two numbers. We'll put in three and four. And let's see what number we see at the end. Oh, we need to save the file first and then go over and refresh. And there's our seven. 
Um, so we added three and four, and then we logged that result to the console. We logged the result of num1 plus num2, which were three and four when we, when we invoked it. We could copy this function invocation, paste it down here, and put in two different numbers, seven and 10. We should see 17. Um, save it again, and there's 17. So we can write whatever JavaScript we want in here and the browser will execute it when index.html tells it to load it. Um, what if I had maybe a different JavaScript file? We copy that, paste it here. We'll say not main.js. And let's say I put a bunch of code into this file, which isn't created right now, but let's imagine it is, and run the page this code in main.js would appear first and then not main.js would activate and would appear second. That is how the browser is going to read your code.